strip mall in Danbury, Connecticut is the last place you'd expect to find one of the area's most unique collections of antique watches and timepieces. Entering Crudelo Jewelers is literally a journey into time. For centuries, clockmakers have been looking for better ways to help us figure out what time it is. Mechanical clocks first appeared in the 13th century, using weights and springs. By the 16th century, the pendulum clock appeared, greatly increasing accuracy. But clocks have become more than just machines. In the hands of a skilled clockmaker, time itself has become an object of art. Time. We're obsessed with it. We build machines to master it, measure it, and manipulate it. And sometimes we build them just for the fun of it. Marcus Crudelo is the third generation to carry on the family tradition. For the Crudelos, time is more than a unit of measurement. You might say it's an obsession. More than simply selling clocks, the Crudelos help to keep alive the history and legacy of this timeless art by restoring and bringing time-worn clocks back to life. Back in time. It's a banjo clock. It's American. It's made by Ingram. Uh, it's time only. Um, it's a uh, cherry case, and um, that's approximately 1920. Now, Marcus, I noticed that this clock has three holes, and some of the clocks in here have two holes, and some of the clocks have one hole. Is there some kind of significance to these holes? Sure. If it's one hole, it's time only. If it has two holes, it's time and strike. And if it has three holes, it's time, strike, and chime. This is a particularly interesting clock. How old is it, and what did you have to do to restore it? This clock is a Dutch clock, approximately 1820. Uh, it's a painted dial. So it actually has clock. wooden parts. Could we take a look at those? Yes, of course. So it looks like this clock actually is fabricated out of both metal and wood. Yes, the plates are wood and they hold in the brass and steel gears. How accurate is a clock like this? Does it still keep pretty good time? This clock, because it's weight driven, is very accurate because gravity is pulling down on a certain weight and as compared to a spring wound clock, which will not be quite as accurate. What's the most unusual clock you have in the store right now? It's called a blinking eye clock. It's from 1856. How do you open that clock? from the back, very unusual. The mechanism is inside. This is the main spring. This is called a balance wheel clock. And the eyes are blinking up and down from what they call the pallet. What would be the most unusual clock repair that you've ever had to perform? Uh, we repaired a clock from 1650. It was a Dutch clock. It was a skeletonized clock. Uh, there weren't that many made. One of the greatest advances in clock making came at a loss, not of time, but of size. The clock gave way to the watch. Marcus's father, Alvin Crudelo, is one of the last classically trained watchmakers still working in the area. Your dad might answer this question a little bit differently, being a master watchmaker, but besides size, what's the difference between uh, repairing clocks and repairing old watches? There's a big difference. A watchmaker can be a clockmaker, but a clockmaker is much more difficult to be a watchmaker. Why is that? Because of size? Because of size, and it's much more difficult to work on watches. So 30 years ago, your dad would have had probably at least one, if not two, apprentices. Now he's passed it on to you, but is there anybody else? No, actually, he had 200 watchmakers working under him, and now there's me and uh, one other person, and there are not many people that even want to enter the field. We live in this incredible age of if it breaks, throw it away. 
What do you think the allure of a watch is compared to a more functional timepiece that you could buy today? As far as I can remember, uh, people have always been interested in watches and clocks. Um, they're into time. Uh, the first watch was made like in the early 1700s, the clocks in the 1500s. And that romance will always continue. Uh, the, some people are not much interested in time, so therefore they'll buy a quartz watch. But people that really are interested in time and the mechanical end of a watch and a clock, uh, that enthusiasm will always continue. We're captive on the carousel of time. Pendulum sway, gears turn, and time inevitably advances. From father to son, both time and the craft of measuring time pass from generation to generation. As we keep asking that age-old question, what time is it? 